All right, this is our first ever music roundtable. I'm Chris Bartgall, and with me I have Benjamin Bartgall, as well as our resident rock fan, Matthew, and we will be discussing today what the greatest album ones of all time are. Now, before we go on to the main part of the video, I do want to say be sure to like and subscribe, comment if you have your own kind of favorite album one. Also, be sure to watch my album review videos on the rest of my channel. My current one is Bruce Springsteen's The River, but I also have one of The Clash's Give Him Enough Rope coming out on Friday. So go watch those if you enjoy this. And without further ado, let's get started. Now guys, I was thinking at the very beginning, I think we all agree that Led Zeppelin has had great album ones. So I was thinking we might want to describe sort of what albums we do and don't want to include on that. I know Matthew in particular has opinions on this. I, I think Ben probably has opinions on this too. So tell me, what are y'all's thoughts on what we would consider the greatest album one from Led Zeppelin? Um, can I go first? Yeah, you can go. Um, like basically anything from like, I think their first six albums you can go with. But since in this criteria of like we're doing three, well, what do I you would... Matthew, we're doing, um, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, we want to start with a unlimited sort of album ones, and then oh, we'll okay, go okay. to free in the later half of the video, although you can talk about the free now as well if you wish. But okay, we will I, I don't talk know. about an uncapped sort of unlimited right now, and then we will talk about free kind of later on as well, although you can mention it here as well. Okay, so I, basically Led Zeppelin's first six albums from, um, you know, basically the first albums that are just Led Zeppelin. You know, Led Zeppelin 1, 2, 3, 4, Houses of the Holy, and then Physical Graffiti in 1975. So basically anything f from 1969 to 1975 for Led Zeppelin is like, kind of like your main entry to the, 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 the band, basically. All right, Ben, you want to go now? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how strongly I feel, but as somebody who listens to podcasts usually means that then I will have developed very, the person that says that will develop very strong opinions on this as it goes along. So, um, but I mean, to some extent, I th agree, though. I, I am kind of unclear why presence is being used as a stopping point and not um, going through, at least in through the outdoor. I mean, Coda, yeah, that's a little more complicated. But, um, well, there's, there's some good stuff on that. To be sure, I can't. I can't put you babies cover on it. But once again, that's a cover. Not only a cover, but I live version of a song that they've already have on the Zephyr one. That's... I mean, I, I can get the case, I think I get the case for a, not including Coda, even if the Zephyr itself considers that part of its main run. It's a compilation album, and after the band <coughs> broke up because of Bonham's death. And... It's about a week or entry. I... Don't see the reason, and I know Matthew's not porpoisey. I don't think. Well, maybe I shouldn't say I know that. I don't think Matthew's porpoisey excluding in through the outdoor, but I don't know. Some of the Zeppelin's best songs are on in through out, in through the outdoor. I mean, also some kind of embarrassing ones, but um, I mean, two two of I would say of the most important Led Zeppelin songs are on the album. And um, I, I at least know one person um, who you all know, but I'm not going to name him because um, I, I haven't his permission to yeah, say. I, his I know who you're podcast. talking about, here, Ben. Who thinks all of my love is the best song of all time? Um, but it's somebody. Wait, I thought, know, I thought he know. thought "Fool of Wayne" was the best song of all time. Oh, not yeah, no "Fool of Wayne." Yeah, yeah. goodbye. And this isn't like a guy who's like a big. Super duper Led Zeppelin fan. Yeah, yeah, this is a deadhead we're talking about here. Yeah. Um, and for people who said it's deadhead, so based a deadhead is someone who's a fan of the Grateful Dead. Yeah. 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 yeah um, 
But yeah, I mean, he, yeah. You, uh, I was thinking Phil in the Rain for some reason. I said All of My Love because my brain is melted, apparently. Um, but yeah, I mean, he thinks that Phil in the Rain is the greatest song of all time. And I think that, even if that's not my opinion, and it's not, I don't even think that's the greatest song of 79. I think that that's like the second best song of 79. Oh, yeah. It's very close to one, and I. It just seems very. I can't make myself be like, yeah, f we're cutting out in through the outdoor out of the one. Even if. If, if this ever had like gone and had like their, you know, sex album one or whatever, and then it had several bad albums, and then had in through the outdoor, I don't understand why we would do that. There are some artists like that. Um, but. I, I mean, I think presence is, and I'm not an expert on presence, um, but I think presence is on a quality roughly even ish. A bit more heavy metal, um, definitely hold on stuff. On a quality even ish with physical graffiti, um, uh, but my opinion on that's not particularly solidly formed. Um, that makes me question why we we're excluding it. Um, and I'm going to go back to me. I would. Um, uh, can I speak? Oh, welcome. Oh, yes. Okay. Because I, I do have something I want to say, especially in regards to presence. Um, yeah, I like presence. I think um, a lot of people know I like presence. As you know, I've already done my album review on presence. So, you know, obviously, if you want to hear my thoughts more at length on presence, you can watch that. But. I do like Presence, I think it's a good album, and I think it's a more, honestly, consistently good album than Info of Outdoor. Like, Info of Outdoor's best songs, like All My Love, Film of Rain, those are, I guess, better than the best song on Presence, which is Achilles' Last Stand, and I guess better than the second best song too, which is probably nobody's fault but mine. But I think Presence works really solidly as an album. I'm still kind of debating back and forth on how well In Without Out Door works as an album. You know, honestly, we could include all of Led Zeppelin's discography when they were together here, theoretically. Um, I am honestly, I think, personally for including Presence, at least Presence, if not In Without Out Door, in what we would consider their best one. I know, obviously, we can all kind of set our owns, but... Because um, I do think Presence is a, a really good album. You know, I, I've said that, you know, it doesn't end perfectly. I think T for One's a little too long. But otherwise, it is a very fast-paced, kind of very frantic, very hard, medley sort of album. And the rest of it, I think, flows together very, very well. So I think it works very well as an album. It's honestly probably better paced than Physical Graffiti. Now, I'm not saying it's a better album than Physical Graffiti. But it's probably better paced than Physical Graffiti. And... It doesn't have anything, I'd say, even as bad as, like, the crunch on it when compared to Houses of the Holy. And, um, before we go back to Matthew, one other thing I want to say was, um, theoretically we could, um, count the song Remains the Same here, because, uh, oh, when we were, I was going to talk about The Who later on in this video and possibly include Live That Lead, so if, you know, one of you wants to include the song Remains the Same in here, you can do that as well. And um, I'll let Matthew go back to it now. Matthew. Oh, uh, what, what? Do you want me to say why I said the uh, the six? Um, well, yeah, you can, um, you know, just say, I mean, I, I thought you had something to say um, in response to what Ben had said, even though I knew I kind of broke that up. Oh, so basically why I put the first <laughs> six is that it was because, like, usually when you talk about Led Zeppelin, like, the... the Honestly, one of the greatest rock bands of all time. It's usually those six. <laughs> like, when you listen to rock history people, they're like, what are the big Zeppelin <laughs> albums? It usually goes for the first six albums. And not to, like, disrespect the other um, albums, like Presence and, and the other one, in Through the Door, I believe. Um, but those are, like, the six that, like, people are like, these are the Led Zeppelin albums. Basically, that's why I said those first six albums. That's fair. Why? That's fair. I will say, um, I do want to say just briefly before I get back to you, Ben. I will say, um, Presence and Info have a door. 
I do believe all pretty good albums. I know I said I think that Info Vat Duel's a little bit consistent on the road, but I do want to make it clear that I do think it's better than something like In Prison's Birth and something like Black and Blue by the Rolling Stones. So I do think, you know, with them defining a one might be a little bit harder than doing this with Led Zeppelin probably because of that album being where it is. Um, and so I'm going to... Uh, sorry, Ben. Um, I kind of ate into your talking time there, but you go ahead. Okay, what I was going to say is, is that... <laughs> <laughs> to some extent, I feel like I see more people discuss, like, the first four Led Zeppelin albums. I mean, if we're just going by what people are talking about, it feels like I see people talk about the first four Led Zeppelin albums. And then the song Cashmere for Physical Graffiti, and then there's a couple songs from In Through the Door. In Through the Door. Um, and to some extent, I mean... I, I don't see such a or like I see and I don't know exactly what the source is for whatever Matthew's using um all for this. Uh but I mean I'll agree the presence is a like maybe less accessible album. Yeah, I'd say it's probably a less accessible album to say Led Zeppelin Four or yeah, maybe even, like, some songs on, like, Houses of the Holy and Physical Graffiti. The Physical Graffiti is long. It has some very long songs, like, I mean... Yeah, in, I'd say... In My Time of Dying, for instance, and... Well, like Cashmere, too, which is obviously a very famous song. And that makes it... <laughs> it, it is a less hold album. It's a little bit less... I mean, if this gets into, like, a broader historical question about the role that metal played relative to Led Zeppelin, relative to ma what was mainstream rock, which is something that changes over time, in the sense of Led Zeppelin in some ways was the... I'm not going to say it's the only mainstream rock band in the 70s, that would be going way too far. Um, or even better, like, but in some ways, it is kind of true. Um, like, really, I don't know, that's again, this is considered the historical question of, like, <laughs> what are we wanting to draw the line at and stuff, but really, metal only became a really well known genre among people. Other than the handful of Liz Zeppelin songs and knowing who Ozzy Osbourne is in the 80s, with the, well, kind of with Van Halen, which I guess Van Halen was in the late 70s, but them, them but then, you know, uh, Def Leppard getting hits, and then it's stuff like that. Um, that's like a different movement in metal than this. A definitely a different metal movement in metal that is that in is that is in presence. If we wanted to classify presence as metal. But it's a, if it's not metal then it's borderline metal. And the cool well, you know, we can stand all spend all day discussing like what what different people think. It's yeah. my understanding, roughly, American critics generally want to classify the Zephyr's Hold songs as metal, and British critics tend to not want to do that. Um, the, the British tend to focus on sounds that would be in Black Sabbath that are not very present in the Zeppelin as defined characteristics of metal. Though my retort to that would be that the, those sounds are also not present in glam metal generally. Um, they may be present in some Metallica, but definitely very present in Nordic metal or like <coughs> Mongolian metal or whatever. They're not really super present in what was, for many people, what metal was to them. Um, yeah. Um, can I um, break yes. in here for a little bit? I will say, I think, in response to what we said earlier about accessibility, um, Essence of the Holy, I do believe, is probably one of the most 
accessible Led Zeppelin albums. Like, sure, Rain Song's a little bit long, but it's generally pretty. You know, I think something that, you know, a lot of first-time listeners would find a lot more tangible than, like, when the Levy breaks or something. Or, you know, obviously, a lot of people just, you know, start, you know, people who already, like, good rock fans can start with four or one or two or three or whatever but I do feel like for a more sort of broad kind of I guess a bit less more fragile year, fragile eels you know I think maybe Houses of a Holy might be a, a good introduction to kind of rock in general whereas Physical Graffiti I'd say is more on the same style as like Led Zeppelin 3 and 2 in terms of that um Presence, yeah, Presence isn't one you want to start with, but it is a good album, and I do feel like as somebody who is obviously a Led Zeppelin fan, I do really feel like we should include it, uh, or at least I'm personally am going to be including it. Um, Matthew is right, though, that when people talk about Led Zeppelin albums, they talk about all of those the most. I see people probably talking about Led Zeppelin, you know, four, and then one and two the most. And then after that, probably Physical Graffiti, and then probably three, and then probably Houses of a Holy, although I don't really know that exactly for, I guess, a huge fact. I haven't been keeping count, but I think there was some merit to what Matthew has said about, you know, people do talk about that. That is the classic era Led Zeppelin, I mean, it's easy to say the entire discography is an album one, but at the same time, is that really an album one, or is that really just a discography, you know? That's true. Yeah. So, uh, Ben, we got ben it. or Matthew, was one of you wanted to speak some more? Or... Oh, no, I, was about to, good. I was about to say, is there, are we good with Led Zeppelin before we basically talk about their, their best three album run? Um... Yeah, I mean, if, if all of you have said everything you want to say about Led Zeppelin, at least as for the main album one, before we talk about what the best free album one is, yeah. then... Because I think I'm good okay, what with Led you? Zeppelin. What about you, Ben? Yeah, I mean, I think I made my point clear, I guess. I mean... I'm not, like, a massive metal listener, obviously, or, like, a massive, um, presence in joy, or, but, like, it, I can kind of see why you'd break it, because presence is a, well, not, no, well, not just in terms of long songs, but in terms of holdness, well, there's a lot of holdness, and blues, blues rock related holdness in some of the older albums, and also, arguably, the definitive creation. I don't know, that gets into other questions about what is the first bit and other long winded discussion questions at all. Not for today. Uh, um, <coughs> but, um, there was lots of, I mean, especially like with Led Zeppelin 4's single, Black Dog, which was quite successful. Very successful, very well known song. It is a pretty hard blues rock, but also kind of heavy metal song, if you know what I mean. It is quite hard. Yeah. I mean, and. Ben, you, just, kinda true, you uh, just remind me of something I want to kind of interject real quick. Is it is true that Presence is a bit more uniform than the other albums. T for One is the kind of one blues song on it, but other than that, most of it is really just walk or hold walk or metal and a lot of the kind of more folksy influences that you saw on like Led Zeppelin 2 for Houses of Holy is gone on Presence so you could argue that it does represent somewhat more of a lack of variety or lack of imagination even if it is still a very good album. I'm gonna kind of push back on this separation of blues rock and heavy metal, which is, I think, a distinction that exists currently. I... I don't think it's much of as... It wasn't as much of a thing in say, 71. Um... I don't... But obviously, I would say heavy metal almost out psychedelia. In and of itself, almost have a number of things, rock and blues rock included. 
Um, but clearly, what we would consider main metal songs, metal albums from that very early period, and their direct ancestor on Cream, all very blues oriented. <coughs> I mean, both Cream and the Zeppelin come out of the old boards to some degree. More directly in the Zeppelin's case than the Cream's case. But, and if you look at the structures on a lot of the songs of the first few of Zeppelin albums, and, and I, I know we are not discussing Black Sabbath, but in some of the structures used in the more famous Black Sabbath songs from that time period, there was a lot of blues influence in there. It, in fact, the wholeness of metal kind of... ...originates from... And well, it well crowded with overall distortions or mechanical and technological advancements on one hand, or like incorporation of classical Indian music themes on the other. But in some ways, the the holdness of some of those early rockers, as John Lennon would call them. In some ways, it's still kind of... I would say more on Led Zeppelin than the Sabbath, but... Because um, the Sabbath tends to be slow all, but with like a lot more focus on the bass. Uh, in Zeppelin, of like the Zeppelin conception of metal, which is the conception of metal that drives into glam metal, and really all forms of metal afterwards, to some degree, even if there are some people that dispute that, is kind of driven by the blueses. <coughs> kind of, I don't know the right way, jiltiness? The way it kind of breaks, and I don't mean break like an instrumental break of like <coughs> the rhythm section, but like of... The way it reaches a point, if it breaks back the other direction, and then... Hey, hey, mama, see the way you look good. Yeah. Ah, 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 ah. Like, the, the way it shifts back and forth, and, and the syncopation in the notes, is in some ways kind of a defining feature in metal. There's also a defining feature on stuff like... Keith Richards is playing and non metal things like that. Matthew? Yes. Thoughts? Oh, I, I basically said all my thoughts. Although I will say I'm a big fan of heavy metal and hard rock and glam yeah, metal. Yeah, yeah. Um, you were actually kind of straying a little bit off topic, um, you know, Ben, but I don't really mind. Um, so, I think we all mostly agreed that Led Zeppelin's best one is the full six albums and that you could kind of maybe do a kind of adjacent maybe one that includes you know possibly you know Infrared Dog Presence maybe um the song remains the same as well I don't know so now I want to say what would we say is the best free album one like the best free consecutive albums by Led Zeppelin and I was gonna let Matthew go first Okay, okay, that's good, because I actually have the my set for that. I would say, personally, for the best Led Zeppelin uh, three-album run, it's Led Zeppelin IV, Houses of the Holy, and then Physical Graffiti. That's basically my, my three. Okay, Ben, what are your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are probably less solid than Matthews. I kind of have to agree. <laughs> Just because of the... Well, I, I don't really know. I mean, I think I agree that Led Zeppelin 3 seems to me to be weak. Well, I'm sure about this in relation to Hassan the Holy. I'm not sure of it on physical graffiti. But I am, yeah, I'm inclined to think, agree with Matthew on that. Okay, I am this thinking... Zeppelin 3 is a pretty good album. The Zeppelin 3 is a pretty good album. It's pretty consistent until that last song. But between Emma Song and then, like... 
um, the last song uh, about Roy Hopal. It says like at a 7, 7.5 most of the time, which is good. But it's weaker than the Zeppelin 2 and the Zeppelin 4 and a tiny bit weaker than Houses of the Holy and probably also a tiny bit weaker than Physical Graffiti but both of those last two is more marginal in my opinion. Okay, well, I want to say, kind of, and I'm going to start out by talking about Led Zeppelin 3 here, but I am going to be talking about it, um, my free album one as well. Um, Led Zeppelin 3, I will say there was some good stuff um, in there. First of all, I will say, heads off to Boy Hopper. It's not good stuff, but I will say it is, I think, less bad of a song than The Crunch. Um, so let's just get it out of the way. I really like Immigrant Song. The awful songs in there I like quite a bit. I like um, Celebration Day quite a bit. That's probably my second favorite song from the album. I like Out on the Tiles. I like I like Gallows Pole. All those in the Bon Viral Stomp. All I think very good songs. Um, I do agree that something like Since I've Been Loving You isn't as good as I'm Gonna Leave You Babe or something like that. That's kind of the older version of it. And it's not the best paced, honestly, album. I still think it's a pretty good album. I My personal favorite Led Zeppelin albums are 1, 2, and 4, with either, probably 4 being my favorite, but 2 really close, and then 1. But at the same time, like, part of me wants to go with you all and say that the best one is 4 Houses of the Holy Physical Graffiti, I definitely want to include four. Part of me though wants to have two in there. To make it three albums though, that would be two, three, four, but that would cut out one. Which is unfortunate. But I have to ask myself, you know, there are some great songs on Houses of the Holy. You've got the Rain song, I like that. You know, you've got Dancing Days, you've got The Song Remains the Same, you've got, um, over the Hills and Far Away. Yeah, you got some good stuff there. You, you've also got some great stuff. It's it's a better album, probably, than uh, Houses of the Holy. But at the same time, I, I really want to have Led Zeppelin 2 in my free album 1, because it is, you know, for me, it and 4 neck and neck. So I think I am going to go with, personally, Led Zeppelin 2, 3, and 4. Okay, that's interesting. So I guess let's discuss the the like the main sticky point here. Um, yeah, what is it? The Zipper Three versus Houses of the Holy. Mm. So let's start with what issue I have with Hats Off to Boy Hopper. The well, some of it has to do with all the pants vocals not being very good in my opinion. But the main issue I had was with the stereo effect on it being really annoying. And made it pretty crust unlistenable for me through my headphones through the internet. Ben, you should know by now that mono is the superior format. Mm. Was that even released in mono? I don't think so. I, I'm kind of being sarcastic here. Although, to be honest, when I listen to my tone table, the way I have the speaker set up, I am really not getting the full stereo effect. You know, sometimes, you know, there's a time there where stereo was still decently new. They were doing too many things with it. Now, I um, will have to pop back on Led Zeppelin 3. We should probably listen to Hats Off to Roy Hopper. Of course, I have a Wii Master, not an original, but um, we should probably listen to that again see how it sounds on the vinyl, um, if it's as bad. But, yeah, I think you probably made a mistake trying to listen to that with headphones on. It's not really how it's designed to be listened to oh, yeah, keep in I mind. Agree. This wasn't made for the cassette era, this was made for the vinyl record era. Yeah, I mean, that's true. So that does kind of lead to the question, like, how much of that is the issue? Yeah. I mean, the way the stereo... And there are many interesting stereo effects with, like, pan back and forth and whatever, but the way that that specific noise of bobble pan going like, ah! It, it just, like, I don't know, it was really bad. Um, well, the issue both with the crunch is just that it was annoying. It was just annoying. 
<laughs> well, it's again, while Parent was not singing that very well, in my opinion, kind of being annoying. It was just annoying. Kind of like in... Kind of like what you said in the level review, Chris. It was like... Is this what he thinks several people sound like? Like, nails on a chalkboard? I don't know if that's what he was going for. Yeah, yeah, you're but... talking about what I said about Cadillac Ranch and Vwivel? Yes. Yeah. That's what it felt like. Well, Matthew, what are your thoughts on Hats Off to White Hole for? Um, that's... that's from the third, third album? Yeah, it's the last song on Led Zeppelin. I'm gonna be honest yeah. With you. It's a... Yeah, like, basically of why I resisted having putting three in there because like i try to have like when i went in this episode when i try to do the three albums runs they have to be like a very good qual like consistent or even they get better and better better quality and i think that three is it's still a good album from led zeppelin but it's kind it is weak in my opinion it's weaker than the first two and oh yeah you know I find myself listening to Free about as often as Houses as a Holy uh, and Presence, probably. Of course, I'm obviously kind of the odd one out on Presence, as I am obviously kind of in Presence's, you know, cult. I have surrendered my soul to the for Presence, you know, the object, the band. But Free, I don't listen to as much as one, two, four. I listened to it about as much as Houses of the Holy, though. And I like both of those albums pretty well. You know, the thing is, you know, one has Hats Off to White Hope, but one has The Crunch. And that's just, that's just it for me. And, but, I do like Free. But yeah, if I could have, if Free didn't exist, and a Free album one exists, that lives up in one, two, and four, that would be perfect. But unfortunately, you know, you can't do that. Free is in there. I consider free good enough. I consider it roughly on the same level with Houses of the Holy. Yeah, I mean, what, what was I gonna say? I wouldn't say that if let's say this is put three that's appeal, which would be unfortunate because I'm a good song. And not there's also good songs on that. But let's say it was like a fourth there's up an album that doesn't have a fourth was up the old one for whatever reason. Uh that probably still wouldn't lives up in one, two, and then this four we branded as three. Yeah, it still wouldn't be what I would call my best three album one when we get into that, but it would be a stronger contender than anything that Zeppelin could put up, in my, at least in my camp, right now, because instead the Zeppelin's having to put up ones, albums that are like eights, like the Zeppelin 3D or Houses of Holy or Physical the Graffiti. What? That's what I'm and, thinking, Ben, and I, I just want to ask if you would agree with this. It's my personal opinion that Led Zeppelin 3 could be short just the entire one time of Hats Off to White Hopper with literally nothing else replacing it, and it would be possibly a better album for it, and I think I would say the same with Houses of the Holy and the Crunch. Houses of the Holy has, you know, kind of less songs, but if it was short in the entire one time of the Crunch, literally the LP was that much shorter. I think it would be a better album, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, let me think. Yeah, I mean... Let me think. We'll talk about this is for three. I mean, that, well, that about album was... Both hats off to White Hope from 3, but then also the Crunch from Houses of the Holy. Okay, so with Led Zeppelin 3, if you removed hats off for Boy Hope, or, and you just, I don't know, even have like an extended instrumental section, tacked on to Barney, or, which I'm sure I put on Stomp, or like with, um... What am I thinking? Or like, on Physical Graffiti, you know, you have that outtake, Barney, or... If you had that somehow, which is obviously connected, I mean, it's named after the same thing or whatever, but you had it, like, transition, like, Labor does. Well, imagine and it ended with something kind of like... Bonnie, all, which is too short to fit in the Boy Hope at one time, but if you had it, like, 
transition yeah. from Bunny All Stomp to Bunny All or something like that. But yeah, that would be a bit of out of the Imagine house. it ended with a song that was kind of like Black Mountain Side from Led Zeppelin 1. You that know, would still a... be a bit of album. Yeah. I mean, let me think. That's a pretty good song. And, uh, you it's know, the weakest this... song, in my opinion. On the f That's the weakest song in the fourth album, I think. But it would, that would make... That would make the album... It would probably still be like it. Eight, but like it would be a you know, it'd be around the same level of houses as the Holy Colony is if it did that. Okay, I was like, House of the Holy is a pretty high eight relatively for me. Well, Lids Up a three is I don't know if I would say it's a low eight, but it's like. Middle eight. It's lower than your average eight. Not by much, though. Um, if you did Houses of the Holy and you took out... The Crunch. The Crunch. Would it just have a blank space? Well, it wouldn't be a blank space. I mean, it, the blank space would be moved to the end of that side. It would just it would go quick onto the one-out groove. Let me think. That would be, uh, I mean, that album would be maybe like a, yeah, that album might well be like a nine. Oh, a yeah. very low nine. Well, it'd be, be like, why is this one side, side so short? I, um, Jeff Beck could do it on Beck Ola. If he could do it, then Led Zeppelin yeah, could do it. Yeah, but that is an issue. It'd still be a better so album than Beck Ola, and Beck Ola is a great album. That's only like 30 I mean, minutes long, you know. I mean, it would be, it'd be... Side 2 would be still normally sized, but like Side 1 would be like missing 3 minutes. But like... Yeah, yeah the album would probably be like a low 9. Like, it would be maybe a roughly equivalent quality to like... Maybe like Led Zeppelin 1. They should add a cover of She Loves You by the Beatles on that spot. That would be hilarious. <laughs> I'm just kidding. When I say that, I, I don't think they should actually do that. That would be... It'd still probably be Bill of the Crunch, but it'd be kind of a, a, a bad decision. Yeah. I mean, like, I think that that would be... Yeah, that would be roughly around the same quality level of, like, Led Zeppelin 1, maybe, of an album. And, like, if you... I mean, let me go look at which would be physical graffiti songs or, like... We went song and also outtakes from this is the holy. I mean, we have spent an awful lot of time now on um, no. Led Zeppelin. Uh, this I mean, is... you can put like Black Country Woman or something there, which is a little bit longer than the crunch. Yeah, Black Country I don't know Woman. That's a, that's a pretty good song. I would be yeah, but if, that... you, if you just put Black Country Woman down, or maybe even a slightly shorter version of it. Yeah, that album would probably be slightly better than Led Zeppelin. Although one, Black actually. Country Woman's a little too short as it is, I think. So yeah, so but it's it... like four minutes long. That's longer than the Crunch, though. Yeah, I mean, but, but shortening it, know. they should just. I, I think they could put that four minutes probably on the, one side of the record just fine. I mean, they may have to move see. one of the songs from one of the sides to the other side, but back to side one. But still, I think it would be fine. Um. So yeah, I think we all mostly add a consensus, not on the three album ones, but on the album one as a whole. So the next band I want to discuss is the Beatles. It's obviously oh, I have, yeah. I have one last comment on this up, and actually, I think you could probably not have that much trouble putting um the that country woman where all the crunch is. Yeah. Even if it's a little bit longer, because that would still only be like 22 minutes and some seconds. Yeah, yeah, you could fit that on the side. Yeah, yeah, I think that, that album would probably actually be a little bit better than a separate one. If they did that. Yeah, no, I would have no doubt. Now, what, what happens with a gaping hole in physical graffiti? But I... Well, they put the crunch there. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, I think it's... I mean, yeah, I think you could, like, improve these albums up to, like, 
You can improve the zip up to like a high three up to like a high eight. You could probably improve um but based off of outtakes from that time period and you could probably fix Well with Led Zeppelin Free the whole with Led like Zeppelin a low Free nine. Been, been with Led Zeppelin Free Really there's no real question. All you have to do is just slap my my hey hey what can I do onto the album. Alright. Now this is the end of this video on Led Zeppelin, but we do have another round table coming up very soon that was actually filmed at the same period in which we discussed the best Beatles album one. So that will be coming up very shortly as well. You can hear me sort of lead us into it at the end of this video. Uh, and I want to once again remind everyone to watch and subscribe and to also thank everyone for watching this. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.